We welcome you inside the SFA ESPN studios on the campus of Stephen F. Austin State University. I'm Corbin Payton. I'm joined alongside our head SFA soccer coach, Wally Crittenden. And it is that time of year again, Wally. National Signing Day is here, and I know that uh, this is one of your favorite days of the year. And I know that today our Lady Jack soccer program, uh, the future, got a lot brighter today. Uh, tell us about uh, the class uh, of 2018. Oh, it's a it's a great day, and, and thank you for for having me here. And I tell you, it's it's crazy, it's amazing to think that we were here a year ago in the ESPN studios here on campus talking about our 2017 class and what a great class that was, and what a great impact that class had in our season this fall. Uh, and and certainly as we move forward, we're excited about that 2017 class coming back and being returners. Um, but today, our our team got better. Uh, our team in 2018 got better today. Uh, our, our teams moving forward into 2019 and beyond uh, with these returning players coming back into the to the program we're really excited uh, today was a day that we were able to really enhance the profile of our team from an athletic standpoint from a power standpoint from a speed and a high competitive character standpoint so we're really excited about where we're headed I, I feel like I ask you this almost each year and it, and it proves the type of recruiting that you're doing we go all the way back to I, I think at, at the end of the year we always ask how are you go going to replace you know insert a name here and so we've gone through uh, the Chelsea Raymonds and the Zuri Princes and the Dunnigan sisters uh, and now you lose a senior uh, in Hannah Barker I mean sure. you could go on and on but for you and your staff you take a lot of pride and really not missing a beat and you look at the the impact that the last year's class and really all the underclassmen had on the teams last year what is your mindset going in into recruiting to where you you're not missing a step and that this 18 class is no doubt going to have an impact on the upcoming season sure you know that's a good question i'll tell you a lot of coaches when they talk about their individual class recruiting uh, philosophies they talk about having a balanced class for me I'm not concerned with whether our class is balanced I'm focused on what's going to make our team balanced and what's going to make our team better and what players from an athletic standpoint from an experience standpoint and from a competitive character standpoint have the potential to come in and compete from the first day to play and to make us better and to push their teammates and certainly uh, as exciting uh, as excited as we are about them playing uh, on day one, there's also the future that we get really excited about the way that we develop players. And you know, we talk about the continuity and culture. We talk about um, the development that our players have, and uh, you know, it's it's something that we take a lot of pride in. So, six uh, signees today as part of the 2018 class for for the fans uh, at home watching. Take us through uh, each signee and kind of what they're going to bring to the program. I know a lot of them, a lot of sports, sometimes they'll, they'll come on kids late. I know that you guys are out well in advance uh, on your recruits. So take us down the line with uh, these six signees for this year. Sure. So before we get into the six uh, signees that signed today, I'd like to talk about the two that joined our program mid-semester. So the first one is uh, Kennedy Carlisle. Right. Uh, Kennedy Carlisle comes from the Dash Development Academy in Houston. A uh, tremendous player, uh, very strong, very fast, very technical player, uh, and she's someone who uh, we're really excited about playing on the left flank or left front line. Uh, she's definitely going to be an attacking half player. And then we had a transfer in Elise Davis who came in, so she's a freshman and she's immediately eligible. Uh, and she's a very powerful player, a uh, very physical player, someone who's going to compete um, whenever the ball's around her and is going to make sure that physically her presence is felt by anyone you know in, in that proximity and so she's someone that we also see playing in the front half of the field potentially on the flank uh, or up front and so those two players coming in at the mid-semester break will integrate themselves into our team uh, they'll get to know their teammates they'll get to know uh, the competitive standards that we have every day in training We've got a fantastic uh, game uh, slate of games set up for this spring so uh, it's it's good and we're excited that they came in early so I want to make sure that we recognize them first and then as we head through the class, we have players that signed today that are in different units of the field. Uh, uh, the first one we'll start off with is uh, Paige Knipes. Paige Knipes comes from the Albion ECNL program out of Houston. 
uh, my former high school in Clear Lake High School. Uh, so she's Paige is a player that will be uh, an emotional catalyst for the team. She's a player that loves to compete, uh, very physical in how she plays, tremendous ball winner, and very, very good individual defender. And so she's a player that um, has great ties to the program and to the university uh, through, through legacy with her family and, and relatives. And so uh, we're excited to have her on campus. Uh, and so she's a player that we think uh, most likely will be featured in a holding center mid or back line uh, unit group. So, so we're excited about her. In goal, Mackenzie Covington. You know, we, we take a lot of pride in our goalkeepers. We've had good goalkeeping units uh, since I've been here that have performed at a very high level. Many years have been the strength, one of the strengths of the team. And I know that going into this fall, it'll be no different. And so when you get a chance to add a good goalkeeper to your team, you get excited. But my goodness, McKenzie comes in as a three-time All-State performer, um, recognized at different levels of All-State recognition. And so uh, to be able to add McKenzie uh, from Alito High School and from the Dallas Texans Club to, to that goalkeeping unit's great. McKenzie's a, a tough, physical goalkeeper. Uh, she's someone that competes in training at a very high level. She's going to be intense. Um, and she's going to be someone who inspires teammates because of her work ethic and the way that she sacrifices herself and plays. And that's something that you want in a goalkeeper, someone who's going to inspire your teammates. Going from the very back to the very front, Matty Musser, a uh, tremendous uh, forward frontline player who we see playing in the forward unit or out on the edges on the flank. Uh, she's from Brenham High School, um, out of Brenham, and then uh, Challenge ECNL program, so very, very good team. Uh, she's played at a very high level for several years now. Um, actually got to know Maddie for the first time uh, before I left College Station and came here. She had just started with the club there before she moved into Houston. And so Maddie is a, is a very tall, very athletic, six foot tall, athletic forward. Great target player. He's going to be someone who um, can dictate rhythm, can dictate tempo because of the way she moves, the way that she positions herself, and her overall competitive drive. She's someone that, uh, again, when the ball is, is in her area, she's going to make herself known and she's going to compete. She's going to be a tremendous locker room teammate, uh, great energy, great charisma, and we're very, very excited to have Maddie join the club here uh, going into the fall. Uh, and then another College Station player, so close to Brenham, um, but uh, is Rika Shea. Uh, Rika is from College Station, but goes to Bryan High School, plays for Challenge as well. Um, so another player from the Challenge Soccer Club. And Rika is a, a player that um, has great size, uh, great athleticism, very good mobility, uh, tremendous ball winner, is someone who, um, from an intensity standpoint, is always dialed in, is always focused, is always competitive. And again, is a player that when you see out, see her out on the field and the way that she's competing is going to inspire you. Uh, and uh, she's someone that we think will, will do a really good job and make a tremendous impact in the holding center mid position, which typically is a, a ball winning uh, defensive type shifting position. Um, and she has tremendous mentality for that. Cameron Romero. Cameron Romero is a player who's coming from Centennial High School in Frisco. Uh, she plays for the Dallas Texans the DA or Development Academy team. Uh, and Cameron not only is a tremendous soccer player, but she was a very, very good track athlete. So she, when, you, when you think about Cameron and you think about what you can expect to see on the field when she's on the edges, which more than likely she'll be as a winger, midfielder, uh, you think power, uh, you think burst, you think uh, physical, fast, strong. Those are the type of descriptors that I would imagine our fans uh, will, will relate to Cameron. Uh, extremely, extremely competitive person uh, and is someone that when she's on the flank and she's running at you on the flank, you better be ready uh, and you better be ready to give your best shot defending her because she's going to take her best shot at you. And so really excited about the physical tone and physical standard that she's going to impose herself on the edges there. And then rounding out the class, another front half player is in Tia Haynes. Tia Haynes comes from Cypress High School, a challenge soccer club as well. And Tia is fast. Could very well be the fastest player on the team when she gets here. And uh, I'm sure from the competitive nature of some of our players, there's going to be some races in preseason to see who's the fastest. Uh, Tia, a great worker, um, extremely technical player. You know, a lot of times when you have really fast players, um, 
that skill set, as great as it is in open field play, sometimes struggles in confined spaces and keeping sure, control sure. of the ball and finishing and just collective composed goal scoring. Tia scores goals. Uh, and she scores goals while she gets to top speed. And within a step or two, bam, she's at top speed. So she's a player that we're really excited about. And I tell you, when you look at the overall snapshot of the team, every player on this roster can play. There is not a player on this roster that I don't expect to come in fit, uh, energetic, is going to train and play with great passion, and is going to push the person next to them. And when you have that competitive dynamic in a roster and everyone has the athleticism and the talent to compete to play, good things will happen. But I'll also add this. What is really exciting as a staff is we look at the character of these players. And while they will certainly compete against each other to play, if they're not playing, oh, they're going to be tremendous on the sideline and the energy and the investment that they make in their teammates will be really, really high. So it was a good day. It was a really good day for, for our program. You talked about the character. Your team is one that's always high GPA, uh, always involved off the field. Um, it just seems like an, you've, you've got a great culture within, uh, obviously, your own team. But what, what goes in? What are you looking for when you're, when you're out recruiting and, and, and looking for kids that, well, yeah, you, they're going to help you on the field. but. Uh, can really help you uh, from a team chemistry uh, and a culture standpoint. And, and th those are good points. Uh, I think the, the first thing is we look at fit. And when we say fit, you know, how do they compete? Uh, how, how do they stay in shape? Um, what is their uh, technical proficiency, their technical speed, if you will? Uh, and then there are some other uh, intangibles that we talk to coaches about, like the training habits. Uh, what kind of teammate are they? How do they address their parents and their family? And, and those are all pieces that come together um, to, to help create an identity of a player. And, you know, as we get to know these players, we want to make sure that their fit is going to be good for the program. And soccer is going to take care of itself. You know, we've got great coaches. Uh, really, really uh, fortunate to work with the staff that we have. We've got great returning players, you know, of, of the team coming back in, in 2018, you know, depending on the lineup, depending on what our priorities were in 2017, you've got as many as eight returning starters. Many of those are underclassmen that are going to, you know, understand how we do things and take leadership roles. And so in, in 2018, this fall, you know, really excited about that but I'll tell you in 2019 you know we, we have two seniors in our 2018 squad so when you have a foundation and you have a culture like we had and have grown because it takes time and you've got to be consistent and you've got to dedicate and rededicate yourself to that process of establishing culture right uh, when you have that culture grown over four years and we just completed our fifth year and my goodness, to go through that fifth year with the schedule that we had, with the youth that we had, with the upperclassmen helping inspire and continuing to create a platform right. to springboard the program to new heights over the next two to three seasons, oh, well, now, now you've got something that you want to be a part of. Yeah. We're in early February. It, we're going to look up, and it'll be September, it'll be August, we'll be at the Purple-White scrimmage, you know, all of that. Give the fans at home a little bit of uh, kind of a how, how your process is going to work as we move through the spring, and then preview what's to come in the fall. I know you're excited about some games on the schedule and some things like that. Sure. So we want to make sure that in the spring uh, we begin to install how we want to play in the fall. Uh, really excited about that. won't go into too much detail on that just yet. Um, but really excited about the, the way that we're playing, um, style, scheme, uh, priorities uh, that we're, we're installing. And we want to play good games. And so we've got good games on the slate. We've got Texas State, Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Lafayette, the Mexican U-20 national team, uh, Rice. So very excited about the games that we're playing um, this spring. And then, you know, we started, we, start, we haven't even started our 20 hours a week yet. We start a little later so that we can go a little later at the end of the spring to make sure that balances out. 
And so that will get our players very close to finals, uh, being in shape uh, and, you know, hopefully finely tuned as a team from a chemistry standpoint and from a, from a way we want to play. And so then really we're talking about, you know, a month, month and a half, six weeks or so that we're just trusting players and with the culture that we have, we expect them to come back in August ready to play. And uh, in August, we get started right away. I mean, we've got you know teams from the Big 12, teams from the SEC, teams from Conference USA. We've got a, a myriad of conferences represented in our non-conference schedule, like we always do, uh, that will challenge us. What I'm excited about is we went through those same type challenges last year with as many as eight underclassmen right. on the field. Right. Uh, and so. I, I don't believe we'll have eight underclassmen on the field, but you never know. Every position is going to be wide open and the competitive dynamic will be high. So I feel really good about who we are as an identity, the athleticism and the athletic profile that we have, and then now the type of soccer that we're able to install because of the great players that we have here. Well, Wally, we really appreciate you taking the time to give us a little bit of insight, some of the mid-year transfers, the six signees that we have, uh, we'll be excited to see the, the impact that they have uh, on the 2018 season. Uh, we want to encourage all of our fans uh, to, uh, if, if you want to keep up with the Lady Jacks, be sure to check, uh, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. We'll keep you updated all throughout the spring with scheduling. Uh, once we get the fall schedule finalized, we'll be sure to get you uh, all of that information there. So. Stay tuned to all of our social media channels, sfajax.com. We'll keep you in tune. So, Wally, thanks again. We look forward to uh, seeing the 2018 class along with everyone else uh, next season. Thank you, Corbin. Axum Jacks.